Going live in zero. We're going live. Ooh. Look. Why is why does Megan always look better than I do? Have you ever ask yourself? There it is. All right, I'm closing this. Terrible. I'm taking the dog and I'm going out there. All right. Good morning, everybody. Happy 2019. Woo! <laughs> Happy like New Year. Stuff. What's up? I was just saying happy new year. Yes. I would like to tell you that I had a wild night and I'm super hungover, but all of that is a lie because uh, I'm old and fasting and had zero uh, fun drinks. Megan, what'd you do last night? <laughs> I actually hung out with some fellow IDMers. Uh, I hung out with health educator Andrea and her husband. We ate a lot of prime rib. We did drink a bottle of champagne, but between four people, that's not too bad. No. Uh, I'm more rough this morning because I, I guess there were fireworks in the neighborhood or something, and my dogs were barking along with them all night long. So we were ready to like put them in the back of the yard. Oh, no. That stinks. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining the event. I'm Eve Mayer, and my partner is? I'm Megan Ramos, everybody. Megan Ramos of Intensive Dietary Management, IDMprogram.com. I'm Eve Mayer of FastingLane.com. And today is day one of what I hope is going to be a 10-day fast. Because like, Megan, when people go into a fast and they say it's going to be 10 days, that's, that's not always the case, right? No, you never know how your body's going to respond or what's actually going on inside your body. I can't tell you the number of seven day fasts I've sought out and I've only made it 24 hours. But likewise, I can't tell you the number of 24 hour fasts that turned into three, four or five day fasts just because I was feeling good. So you never know if your body's fighting off an infection and is under stress on the inside, you're gonna be hungry, your electrolytes are gonna be busy trying to fight off that infection so you're not gonna be feeling as good and you're more ri at risk for symptoms of like keto flu. So you, you just never know and at this time of the year, you never really know. I was wondering what your uh, New Year's Eve was gonna look like because if it was uh, a little too wild with lots of festive beverages, you'd probably be feeling dehydrated today. So today wouldn't be the best day to start off on a on a 10 day fast. You wanna make sure you're nice and hydrated. But it sounds like you've eaten well, you've hydrated well, you weren't wild. So these are all good things um, leading up to a 10 day fast. So we'll oh, just take it day by day. Um, the biggest red flag for me when anyone is fasting is nausea. So if you or anybody feels nauseous for any reason during a fast, you should absolutely and the fast. It doesn't mean that you have to go crazy and that you have to eat all this crazy food and, and then eat for several days. You can just have one meal and if the nausea goes away, you can absolutely jump back into the fasting. So that's the one red flag. Otherwise, I usually encourage people to try to push through with fasting. And if you are trying to fast at this time of year and you do get dehydrated, there are some tricks and stuff that we can talk about just to try to ease uh ease into the fasting especially after a holiday celebration like new year's got it thank you so much megan and everybody sees my shirt it's dtf down <laughs> to fast are you down to fast with me um there's been a lot of people in the group who have said they were in they're fasting for 10 days there's been people who are like oh my gosh no that sounds horrible and i will be fasting for five days and then there are other people who are like i will be fasting for 10 minutes and i'm like good get it i'm proud of you um, but we hope that you join along at whatever length feels good to you. A couple of people asked and said, you know, I've, I've done 24 hour fast. Should I do a 10 day fast? Um, I am no expert. Megan is, but my, my advice would be no, because I did something similar to that and it, it, was, it was pretty horrible. Uh, it was pretty rough. So I've been practicing fasting since April of last year. This is only my third extended fast, but Megan, what's your advice as far as choosing a, a length of time for a fast? So we do have patients that come into the clinic and jump in and, and do a, a longer fast, but usually those patients are really sick and we're trying to stop them from an immediate threat. So an example of that would be, you know, they have a diabetic foot ulcer that's so bad and they have to start talking to an orthopedic surgeon about amputation. 
So in those cases, like those crazy cases, then we usually, you know, sort of push someone into a longer fast. But I always like to think of fasting like exercise. Um, a couple years ago, my husband moved uh, to Toronto from California and we moved downtown and there's all these fancy gyms. And we hadn't really worked out because we spent all of our time on airplanes seeing each other. And I thought, okay, we are going to start working out. We're going to become more mobile. And, you know, I, I just want to be a super fit, badass, like 90-year-old. So I wanted to go to the gym. And my husband, so he said to me, he looked at me and he laughed. And he's like, we're not spending hundreds of dollars a month at one of these fancy gyms. We haven't worked out in two years. He's like, let's just stretch and, and see how we feel. And we just stretched at home and I was so sore for like three days from stretching. Um, you know, fasting is very much like that. So unless a person is at an immediate threat, we like to think of fasting as a muscle. And we don't want you to hurt yourself. Your body has to adapt. It's not that you're not capable, perhaps, of doing a seven-day fast or a 10-day fast, but you have to let your body adapt. You know, I always joke that human beings, we're not a very bright species, but we're a highly adaptable species, and our bodies will adapt, but there's no need to punish yourself. You know, I go to the gym and I weight train now, and now I can deadlift more than my own weight, but you know, a year ago, if I tried deadlifting my own weight, I would have hurt myself. It would have been too much. So I had to start off at like a third of my weight and like slowly work my way up so I can now deadlift this weight and feel really good. And that's the same thing with fasting. You know, I always encourage people to try to challenge themselves a little bit, but don't push it. You know, you, it's like a muscle. So it's okay to put a little bit of stress on that muscle, but you don't want to put too much stress on the muscle that you hurt yourself. So it's the same thing with fasting. You want to push through an extra few hours, maybe a, an extra night when you're sleeping through most of it. You want to stretch it out a bit, but you don't want to push yourself too, too hard in case you get nauseous or your body just isn't ready to do that kind of fast yet. Uh, I started off at 18 hours of fasting and when that felt easy, then I said, okay, it's time to go up in, in my fasting hours, just like you would go up and wait. So then I went to 24 and 24 felt like hell on earth, but then that became easy. And then it's like, okay, 36 and you build upon that. I personally didn't do my first seven day fast for almost a year into fasting. Um, and I only did it then I had reversed all my disease and lost weight, but we were asking patients to do it. So I thought, well, I might as well try it. And there are benefits to doing a longer fast. So just like you, Eve, so many people experience that. They'll do a few 24-hour fasts, and they'll see on Facebook how so-and-so has done seven days, five days, 10 days, 14 days, and they think, I want to jump into that. But your fasting muscle just isn't conditioned enough to do that yet. But you can absolutely get there, and that's why I think you have a good chance at kicking major butt with this 10-day fast. Oh, thank you, Megan. So you heard what Megan advised, like push yourself just against your own record. So if you've done a 24, maybe do a 32 or maybe do a 26 or maybe just do another 24. It's totally up to you. Only you can pick what you want to do. Um, there've been some people online, Megan, asking like, do I have to do an extended fast to have success? And I think the answer is no. Like, some people do and some people just don't. Some people can do 16, eight their whole lives and get all the success that they need. What, what's the answer to that? Well, we're all, we all have different degrees of metabolic dysfunction, right? We've all tried different diets in the past that have affected our metabolism in different ways. So it, it's tough, you know, people who did a low carb, high protein diet in the past, they didn't really go low calorie. So it might be easier for them to lose weight. Whereas if you're like me and dumb like me and did, you know, like try to survive on 500 calories a day for like five years during their 20s, um, you really did in your metabolic rate. So you might need to fast a little bit longer. But we actually, we wanted to do uh, longer fasts with our patients and all of our colleagues said, no, 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 IDM, you wouldn't, Jason, you can't do that. It's crazy. So we only started out doing intermittent fasting. And all of our patients got great results just because they were consistent with it. Every yeah. week, 
did three days of fasting. Um, so it's not necessary. I've seen people reverse 30 years worth of diabetes within you know a year from doing intermittent fasting. That's pretty incredible. So you don't necessarily need to do an extended fast. I never did an extended fast uh, to reverse my diabetes, my polycystic ovarian syndrome, or my fatty liver, and I lost 86 pounds not doing extended fasting. Um, do I do extended fasting now? Yeah, absolutely. There are other health benefits and it has helped me lose that last stubborn bit of body fat that I wanted to lose uh, and get rid of, but it's, it's not necessary. I'm sure I could have gotten rid of that last little bit of stubborn body fat uh, by doing more regular intermittent fasting. But for me, when you're fasting muscles strong, it's just easier to do a whole bunch of days back to back and get it done and over with. So it's yeah. not necessary for everybody. I actually find um, extended fast tends to benefit ladies the most who have a long history of calorie restriction dieting because their metabolic rates are so low. Like your metabolic rate will match your caloric intake. So over time, if you're surviving off 800 calories a day, your metabolic rate is going to drop to 800. And then it just becomes really difficult to lose weight. Uh, so the longer fast, the longer you fast, your body actually produces adrenaline and adrenaline spikes your metabolic rate. So doing the longer fast really sort of, it helps with those ladies um, who have that history of calorie restriction. Well, perfect. That is definitely me. Um, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about who I am. And then I'd like to ask Megan to tell a little bit about who she is. I think honestly, most of you know who Megan is. Uh, but just in case, we'll give you a background. Um, my name is Eve Mayer, and I am not a doctor. I'm not a researcher. I'm not a scientist. I am a chick who was super obese for 24 years. Um, I love food. I'm from South Louisiana. Food is maybe my favorite hobby, and I still love it. And I have had three bariatric surgeries. I've been on every diet imaginable. And I stayed obese until this past year for my entire adulthood. Um, tried trainers, tried therapy, tried absolutely everything. Starvation, uh, soup diets, just, you know, everything. And really didn't find success and freedom until this past year because of low carb eating and intermittent fasting. So um, I peaked at 300 pounds years ago. And uh, this past year got down, the lowest I got down to was 181. And um, I, I just uh, feel better and I'm healthier than I've ever been. And I think that hopefully I'm relatable. So I think that's a good reason that I'm going to talk about this 10 day fast really openly, because as you can see, um, I didn't put on makeup because I'm lazy and um, you may see the dog run around and I'm not a size four, which I, you know, there have been fours in my sizes, but they were never the only number that were there. Um, and so I love fasting, but I don't find it easy. I don't find it easy with my lifestyle. I don't find it easy emotionally. I experience a lot of anger. The more I do it, the less I deal with that. But I thought it would be really nice if somebody could hear how I really felt through this process. Now today, I'm not talking about it too much because I just had dinner last night and I'm not hungry because I usually do a 16, eight almost every day. I very rarely eat breakfast. So today we're going to take, talk about who we are, why I'm doing this, what I'm going to drink, what, you know, does IDM do? Um, and then tomorrow we'll get a little bit more into it, but I'm not pissed off yet. Let's put it like that. Right. Um, day three, day four, you might see somebody who is just, you know, not this happy. Uh, but I'm really interested. This is my third or fourth extended fast. And I feel like I'm very prepared. Um, I'm very fortunate to have a husband and a daughter who are going to cook for themselves and go out a lot. I have scheduled activities because I get really bored when I fast. And I'm going to talk to you honestly all throughout that. So once again, um, a success story from IDM, a success story from low carb eating and uh, reading the obesity code and the complete guide to fasting huge fan of Dr. Jason Fung and Megan. And I'm um, just going to talk to you honestly about what it's like for a super imperfect person to do a 10 day fast. We're going to be doing this every day for 10 days. Today's our first day. We'll put the event 
the day before in the Facebook group, the Obesity Code uh, Network Facebook group. So you can join us there. We'll also have the recaps at fasting.fyi forward slash T-E-N. That's fasting.fyi forward slash T-E-N. And all over Megan's uh, social media and mine, we'll be talking about what's going on. So um, Megan, how much did you and I plan about what we were going to talk about today before this call? None. We're totally winging it. My husband was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't tell Megan what I was going to say. I didn't tell her what I was going to ask. Uh, we have absolutely no plan. And honestly, that's how we're going to do it every day. Once again, because I'm a little bit lazy. And number two, because I think it would just be more authentic. And if I'm ticked off or I'm frustrated, that's how I'll show up. And if I'm feeling great, that's how I'll show up. Um, and I will take care of myself. If at any time I am nauseous, as, as Megan recommended, I will end the fast. And if any time I'm thinking about what I should do if I'm dizzy or I don't feel well, I'm going to use Megan's guidance to, to understand what I should do. So um, that's who I am. I'm Eve from FastingLane.com. And Megan, tell people who the heck you are. So I co-founded this intensive dietary management program with my colleague, Dr. Jason Fung. Uh, he's a nephrologist, which is a kidney doctor. He's based in Toronto. I've actually worked with him for 20 years. I um, always wanted to get into medicine and preventative medicine. So I started doing research when I was a kid and I family hit medical history, um, just had a keen interest in kidney disease. And as I grew up, I saw the evolution of diabetic kidney disease. When I was 14 and I started doing research, no one had it. And by the time I was in my mid twenties, 90% uh, of the patients coming into the clinic had kidney disease because of diabetes. And we used to barely have any patients. And then we had so many patients, we were putting them on dialysis in closets because we didn't have enough floor space in the dialysis unit to give them dialysis. Um, so I thought I, I need to take my health seriously in my mid twenties because I do have this family history of diabetes and kidney disease. Um, so I started following the Canadian food guide. I started working out with an expensive trainer when you're that age outside of school. Oh my gosh, I can't believe how much money I was spending every week on this woman. Um, but what happened when I started following the food guideline and when I started working out, I actually gained a lot of weight. I gained almost 80 pounds, just over 80 pounds actually and I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Um, my whole life I'd say I was skinny fat though. I've never had a lot of energy. I loathe PE class. I loathe any sort of physical activity and I had fatty liver disease at the age of 12 and polycystic ovarian syndrome at the age of 14 which are d diseases of obesity. Um, so even though I didn't weigh very much uh, I had a lot of body fat and I had brittle bones and I wasn't a strong kid. Uh, so just because you're slender doesn't necessarily mean that you're not fat. So uh, I think I've struggled with obesity my whole life and just never really knew that because doctors don't talk about body composition and they don't fixate on it either. Everyone just fixates on total body weight. Uh, but as I, as I got older and started to, to take health into my own matters and follow all of the recommendations, I just became more and more obese. So I started following everything I learned. I had gone to Weight Watchers so many times with my grandmother and great aunt growing up. Uh, started counting points, started counting calories, started doing all kinds of crazy things and I just kept gaining weight. Uh, and along with all that weight came along with the diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. So my colleague Jason, he was getting really frustrated because his kidney patients, if they had diabetic kidney disease, there was nothing he could do to help their kidneys because if the diabetes got worse, the kidneys would get worse. So he was doing some research into some out of the box things and he recommended I try going low carb. Well, that was tough. I was born in 84 into an Irish, Italian, Scottish family, and all I ate was carbs, and I wasn't a great cook. I, survived, I was sustaining off of fast food pretty much for most of my 20s. Um, so it was, uh, it was tough. Uh, so I struggled with that, and then he said, well, why don't you fast? And he had been doing some research on the religious aspects of fasting. 
and he gave me some articles to read and it was pretty compelling stuff. So that day I started my first fast. And well, within a month, I had dropped from diabetic to borderline diabetes. I had lost a lot of weight for the first time ever. Um, and my fatty liver numbers started to improve. And I hated it. I hated every second that I fasted at the start. <laughs> uh, and I had periods of times where I definitely felt awful and I wasn't going to make it. Um, but six months after that, you know, I kept pushing because I was getting results. And in six months, I had gotten rid of all this disease that I had had for years. And I had actually, my appetite changed. My cravings for certain foods started to change. And I was turning down food for the first time. And I definitely knew I was becoming more hormonally regulated. Um, so I had a lot of success. And my kidney patients, they wanted to do whatever I was doing. And we, where we live, we actually have a lot of people who fast for religious reasons. So I would just tell the patients I was fasting and they said, oh, well, we do that for Ramadan every year. Can we do that in between, you know, during non-Ramadan times? And we'd say, sure. So we started the intensive dietary management program where we use therapeutic fasting. And of course, we recommend low carb diet. So we really focus on when, when you should be eating. And in our program, we have patients who don't follow low carb diets, but we focus on their meal timing and on their fasting and they still get great health benefits too. So we started this program in June of 2012, and now it's just turned into this crazy monster out of nowhere. This is totally everything I wanted to do with my life and totally not the way I thought I was going to do it. <laughs> I wanted to help people, um, but I never thought I would be doing that through, the, through this. Uh, and having such an incredible reach. Um, so at the IDM program now, you know, we really, we encourage low carbohydrate eating or at least eating real foods and staying away from really refined and processed junk. Um, but we focus a lot on meal timing and fasting. Uh, we do see people in clinic, but it's very small. Most of our programs actually run online. So we want to be able to help everyone. It broke my heart years ago because I'm, I'm, I'm such a spoiled Canadian and I don't realize how good I have it. And several years ago, um, I was getting all these emails from Americans in particular telling me the cost of their medications or cost of their health care. And it just like totally broke my heart. And around the same time, I met my husband who's American and his mom was sick and just hearing about the cost of her medical bills and I'm like oh my gosh like we have to be able to help these people and you know, we're so fortunate here in Canada so we started doing IDM therapeutic fasting education and coaching and counseling all online because you know we shouldn't just be able to we need to be able to help everybody not just people that are in Toronto so you now we work with um, just over 10,000 uh, clients from all over all over the world it's really cool i'll have a group um and we'll have someone from the uk someone from australia someone uh, from sweden an american and a canadian and it's really nice to nice to connect with everybody because you know these aren't just diseases that are in our particular area they're affecting the whole world so we can connect and all learn from each other and help each other out Thank you so much for explaining that, Megan. One of the things I want to do as we go through this process over the next 10 days is I still have questions of what the IDM program provides, even though I'm a paid member, but, and I think other, do, other people do too. So IDM, if you found this broadcast on the IDM Facebook group, it is an incredible group and it's also incredible because it's freaking free, right? Like it's free. There's tons of support. There's tons of information. And I think people have started asking me when I said I was going to do this and show what coaching was like, is like, you know, do I need to pay? Do I need to do the membership? I have no idea. Just like I don't know if you need to do a one day fast or a 10 day fast. For me personally, I'm high maintenance. That's just how it's going to go. I'm very specifically high maintenance in areas. I have a lot of emotional baggage when it comes to food. Um, a lot of struggles that are built up over 24 years. And so personally, I'd be willing to pay for a higher level of support and service. Some people just don't need that. In fact, probably a lot of people don't need that. And this free group on Facebook and um, idmprogram.com, if you sign up for their newsletter, they put out a newsletter every week that's free. They put out information on the blog that's free. That can very well be enough information for you and be what you need. 
If you need something more, we're gonna explore what the options are over the next 10 days. We'll talk about the pricing so people understand, and you can decide if that might be something that you want to check out or not. Does that sound good, Megan? Sounds great. Perfect. Okay, so we talked about intermittent versus extended fasting. We talked about IDM a little bit. We'll get more into that tomorrow. Um, people have been asking me what I am going to have during that fast, this fast. So Megan, um, you know, there's all kind of controversy of like a fast is only a fast if you do water and salt or a fast is a fast if you do water, salt and coffee, but not if you have cream in the coffee or not if you have bone broth. And I'm just going to give my opinion. A fast is a fast if it works for you, improves your health and hotness and you're doing something healthy. So I am weak. And I need all the fasting aids, all of them. I need cream, a little bit of cream, one tablespoon of heavy cream in my coffee, which I do twice a day. I need a uh, bone broth every once in a while if I feel super hungry because I feel like it enables me to fast longer. And I um, am going to have tea. I'm going to have coffee. It kills me, but I will not have stevia. Kills me. Jason and Megan ruined my life when they explained to me why I couldn't have stevia. But that's okay. So this will be my first extended fast without stevia. So I'm very excited to see if I feel less hungry, which I probably will. Um, but I'm going to use bone broth at some point, tea, coffee, water, salt, pickle juice, apple cider vinegar, club soda. Yeah. So, so that's my jam. A lot of you had said you're going to join the 10 day fast and you're going to do water and salt only. And that is awesome. Like super pure fast amazing. I am just not at your level. So Megan, can you talk a little bit about what people can have in a fast? And I mean, these are the things I learned from the Complete Guide to Fasting book and the Obesity Code book um, and by following you and Jason, but a little bit about that and then we'll close up. Yeah, absolutely. So there is a place for water only fasting and usually that, that place is for treatment of cancer, um, treatment of neurological conditions, or disease prevention. And what nowadays it's, you know, people are really focused on optimal health. They want to be healthy. So if that means your water is optimal, then they want to do that. And I think people need to take care of their immediate threat. Like my immediate threat was my diabetes. Then it was my weight. Then it was my, you know, polycystic ovarian syndrome and fatty liver. Once I take care of those things, then I can worry about living forever and being healthy. I've got a history of cancer and Alzheimer's and dementia and all that Parkinson's, is my, my gene pool is real fun. Um, so, you know, I wanna focus on that. But when you're trying to lose weight, get control of your diabetes, get control of your health in the first place when your health is a little screwy. You know, our goal is to, when we're fasting is to keep our insulin levels as low as possible throughout the day. So water has no effect on your insulin and tea and coffee, preferably black, um, don't have any effect on your insulin levels really. Coffee in some people, but most people um, can get away with drinking a few cups of coffee a day and having it not affect their insulin levels. And bone broth, a pure bone broth, sorry, a pure bone broth really isn't gonna screw up your insulin levels too much. So the idea when you're looking to, to gain control of your health and gain control of your weight is to really focus on a fast that's going to keep your insulin levels down. So to hydrate yourself, you want to drink water. Uh, you can have club soda too, just carbonated water. So you can have flat mineral carbonated water, that all works. So that will keep you nice and hydrated. For variety, so you didn't get too bored, you can have any herbal tea or black tea if you like. You can have a few cups of coffee throughout the day, um, but preferably black because any little bit of fat that you add to your tea or coffee, well, your body is gonna burn that fat instead of your own body fat. And if you're fasting and you wanna lose fat, you wanna make sure you're using your own body fat not the fat that you ingest in your tea or coffee. So that's important. And I get it. I, I used to have like four milks in my tea. Oh my goodness. So I had to work my way down. Um, so if you can't drink your tea or coffee black, I get it. But you don't want to be adding too much because you have to think whatever I'm pouring into my tea or in my coffee, however much fat, well, my body's going to be burning that before it's burning, you know, this. 
and you want your body to be burning this when you're fasting. So just be mindful of how much heavy cream or how much butter or milk you're adding to your tea or coffee. Um, the reason why stevia is a no-no is because you know I've seen it for a decade now in thousands of people, and I wish stevia was just this magical, wonderful alternative that made people lose weight and not be hungry and keep their insulin levels low. I really wish that for everybody, myself included. I <laughs> drank more sugar in my tea than I had tea in my tea. Um, so it would have been a lot easier even for me to add stevia in. So I sympathize with everyone out there. But stevia does cause insulin levels to go up, and that's problematic. Just because it doesn't make your glucose levels go up doesn't mean that it doesn't make your insulin levels go up. And insulin can spike your hunger. Insulin's a fat-trapping hormone, so it's going to slow down your progress. And when you're producing insulin in your diabetic, well, too much insulin is what causes diabetes. So adding more insulin to your system isn't a good idea if you're looking to reverse the diabetes. So it's, it's good if you can avoid it and just try to drink some herbal teas. There's all different kinds of wonderful herbal teas out there. Peppermint tea is a great appetite suppressant tea too that can help really calm your belly if it's gurgling and it's got no caffeine in it. So you can drink it right up until you go to bed without it having any sort of negative impact on your sleep. Um, Broth and pickle juice are great things to help replenish your electrolytes. Most people, when they're doing an extended fast, think that they don't need to be worried about electrolytes at the start of the fast, that it's important at the end of the fast. And that's not true at all because you lose the most water weight during the first three days of the fast. And your body loses very little body water weight after that. So you're at risk for losing electrolytes the most at the start. So day one, not day seven. So it's really important that you do take some form of electrolyte. So people who do water fast will add salt. But for other people, taking bone broth, taking pickle juice, all of that stuff's great and it's not going to negatively impact your insulin levels. So taking a few cups of bone broth. I used to drink so much bone broth, chicken bone broth, that I thought like my body odor started to smell like a chicken and I became self-conscious. <laughs> Um, so pickle juice is a great alternative too if it's got no sugar in it. There's all kinds of recipes you can Google online to make your own even if you don't want to go out and buy lots of jars of pickles. Um, but it's a great, great alternative. If you're in a warmer climate, um, right now I know our Australian followers and are in the dead of summer right now, you can actually make like pickle juice popsicles. And oh yeah, I love those. Fasting day. Yeah. So if those are in Texas, you can go to a snow cone stand in the summer and get a pickle juice snow cone with tahini seasoning on top. That's amazing. I have heard it's that for a few. So good. And <laughs> it's, just, it's just pickle juice. Like they literally take the jar out and pour it on the snow cone. Like think of the profitability of the snow cone, right? Like just pour the pickle juice in there and put some tahini seasoning and it's, it's killer. Sorry, go ahead, Megan. I, I think the last thing and you had mentioned was apple cider vinegar. Why might someone want to take that during a fast? Well, it's a great appetite suppressant. That's the bottom line. It's a really effective app uh, appetite suppressant. You don't want to be drinking it all day long in your water because it will screw up your enamel and your teeth. So, you know, try to have it two or three times throughout the day, a tablespoon or two at a time. Make sure you rinse your, wa your mouth out with water before and after, or you use a straw um, just to sort of protect the enamel on your teeth. But it's a great appetite suppressant for when you're starting to feel a little like, oh, I don't know if I can, you know, make it the next few hours, take some apple cider vinegar. Um, it also does reduce your glucose levels. So if you are a diabetic, it will help actually reduce your blood glucose levels, which has a mild impact on reducing or a mild effect on reducing your insulin levels as well. So it's, it's a mildly beneficial in that sense, but it's a great appetite suppressant that's going to reduce your insulin a little bit rather than bring it up. So the whole purpose of our fast is to really make sure we're not producing any excess insulin. I like it. Thank you for sharing that, Megan. Um, I, a couple people have asked me like, what's the purpose of this fast? The purpose of this fast specifically for me is before Christmas, I, um, you know, had been doing low carb and I'd stayed in the one eighties all year. 
And then for a week at Christmas, I went to Louisiana and ate all the things. It, it was worth it. I'm not going to lie. It was amazing. And I enjoyed it. Um, but now I am out of the 180s at one. I'll tell you my weight every day, which is terrifying. 193.4. And I was like, no, like my weight needs to start with one eight um, forever. So my goal is to overcome the week of damage that I enjoyed. And uh, so, so that's really what I do. And I want to practice and share the experience with you guys. So please uh, check out idmprogram.com, sign up for their free newsletter. Please check out fasting.fyi forward slash TEN. I have a clock there that tells you how long I have been fasting, which is not very long right now. It's been since last night at eight o'clock. Um, and also all of the videos that Megan and I do together will be posted there. And we know that you've probably posted a lot of questions today. I'm going to look through all those questions and I'm going to include some of them in our discussion tomorrow. Our discussion tomorrow will be at 7.30 a.m. CST. That's in the morning, very early. That's when we'll be on live. But don't worry, if you don't see us live and you would like to sleep late or you are somewhere else and that is three o'clock in the morning, it's perfectly okay. You can click that link and you can watch it anytime you want. And I think Megan and I will also be posting those things on our site. So you'll be able to find them at idmprogram.com later on and fastinglane.com. So you're not gonna miss anything. We're gonna invite you to the event today. So you'll know what it is each day. Every day before the event, we'll tell you what time it will be the next day. I think that is all of our scoop for today. Megan, did I miss anything today? No, just everybody, you know, especially coming off of the carbs and the holidays, make sure to stay hydrated. And even myself, I, I don't need a lot of tools to fast anymore. Um, and I am focused on disease prevention. But even myself coming off the holidays, coming off of eating out, there being more carbs, um, it's really important to make sure you hydrate with things like broth and pickle juice during this time. So I've got uh, six quarts of, of chicken broth myself cooking upstairs right now. Um, it's great. My house still smells like Christmas <laughs> with the, the, the bones. Um, so hydrate. The first few days of the fast is just so important to hydrate. So be mindful. Set an alarm on your phone every hour to go off to remind you that you need to drink some water, have some juice, or pickle juice, have some broth. Um, I like alternating so it doesn't get boring throughout the day. I'll have I had water, now I'm having tea, then I'll have some broth because my broth will be ready. And then I'll go back to water, tea, broth. I don't drink coffee. That's a taste thing for me. It's not a health thing. If you like coffee, drink coffee. Um, I think there are a lot of health benefits to drinking coffee within reason. So if you like it, drink it. You don't have to avoid it. A lot of people hear that I don't drink coffee and they think that I do, do it for health reasons. I just think it tastes poopy. So... Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but alternate your fluids so it doesn't get boring throughout the throughout the day um, and just really focus on that so set an alarm on your phone tell tell your Google home to send a reminder for you in an hour after you finish your your last drink um, we've got all this technology to help us out so make just really make sure today tomorrow next day stay hydrated and we'll keep talking about that as the week progresses too Megan, thank you so much. Thank you for being here and, and teaching all of us. And just one little bit of advice that I'd love to give you. 2019 is your year. Stop beating yourself up if you're doing that. Decide you're gonna be kind to people and it starts with being kind to yourself today. Stop being mean to yourself. You don't deserve that. So have a great day, everybody, and we will see you tomorrow. Happy fasting. Bye.